So every once in a while, I feel like it's important for channels, especially channels like mine, where there's a ton of editing going on and a ton of producing going on, that we do videos once in a while where we're just sitting back and talking and relaxing with no real edits going on or anything like that, just chit-chatting. And I think a story that needs to be told in deeper detail that I'm going to use this video as an excuse to do, but would be to tell you the whole story of the NES Pursuit, how it came to be from start to it becoming a thing and becoming a long lasting thing that it is now. So with that, let's get into the story, the deep story of how the NES Pursuit came to be. So I grew up playing video games, just like almost all of us. It's funny now because when we were playing the games, you think of them like they were retro games. I was always a retro gamer, but no, that you couldn't have been a retro gamer back then because that was really all that really existed. Yes, there's like Atari, but that wasn't even considered retro when I was a kid. It was just pretty much current, maybe a little late, but grew up playing Nintendo, Super Nintendo, N64, um, holding Smash Brothers tournaments at my house after school all the time. That was huge for us. And then at the end of high school, I started playing, you know, again, what was current, keeping up with the Call of Duties and the Battlefields and games like that and going to Howie's Game Shack and places called Cyberdeck and being a PC gamer and getting back into console gaming just like a year after that with playing more Call of Duties and that style of game. And that's just kind of the random ride that everybody takes, stayed with the trends of games as they came, as they went. And then I kind of stopped playing video games for a little bit. I wouldn't say completely stopped playing, but I got busy with my job and with my work, as most people do as you get older, and didn't really completely stop playing, but didn't play as much. Then there was a period of time where I was at my job and I got switched over to a different department from what I do. Normally I work out in the field, I work in the energy industry, I work by the poles, with the poles, with everything going on outside, electric poles. And I got put in the nuclear plant. Well, I bid for the job because I needed to change positions. I got a job at the nuclear plant in Southern California at San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station. It was a great job by all terms of finances and climbing up the ladder, as people say. But the job itself didn't entail, like, entail any real focus, in my opinion. It was very just like type, 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 and you can kind of keep your brain situated with something else. You know, people would listen to podcasts, Pandora, whatever. And for me, at the time, it was probably like 2011, maybe 2010, I started watching YouTube. And this is my first dive into watching YouTube at all. Uh, YouTube was a thing in around 2006, I think maybe even late 2005. And I started watching YouTube. And it's funny because... At this time, you know, I've always been into a lot of things, surfing, running, a, a million different things, things that I've been into. But as soon as I found YouTube and decided to start watching YouTube as a pastime while I'm typing and doing my work, just kind of watching YouTube up to the side, I don't know what it was in my brain. I decided to search up video game stuff, but it was interesting because I didn't decide to search up current. And where I left off in gaming was current. I was playing the Call of Duties, the Battlefields, the Halos, like I said. But for some reason, my brain just started searching retro gaming. And I think one of the very first channels I might have found is a channel called Retro Gamer 3 and even the messy video game nerd, 8-Bit Eric, um, SNESman16, and AVGN. It's a Nintoaster. And yes, it works. And right in there, right finding that, just searching literally the words retro gaming, what's, what's going on, what's going on in retro gaming, my brain didn't even know that I was going to get this deep into it, come to find out in the future. But I just started to kind of love what I was seeing, and as anybody, your nostalgia triggers hit you. Boom. Oh, I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. And that's when I first realized nostalgia was a thing and was powerful, because... Not only did I get back into what I loved and started thinking about those old memories that I used to have, but it, it quickly consumed me as something I wanted to dive deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the more and more, the more I watched videos. I was big into watching like top tens, NES Complex was one of the, the, the big ones for me that I loved watching. 
Um, his channel wasn't big at the time is not what I'm saying, but he was one that I watched all the time as well. And I love these things. And then all of a sudden, my brain was like, hmm, I love these things. I love the nostalgia. I love watching it. I don't know anything about YouTube editing, nothing. But I was like, I wonder if it would be weird if I started collecting these things again. I wonder if people like go out and look at video games. You know, I knew obviously AVGN and these people had video games. You would see them in their game rooms and whatnot. But I was like, I wonder if like people like, probably not it's so stupid. I wonder if people would ever show themselves purchasing these games, going to get these games. And I typed in retro game hunting was like the big search for me that to be honest, kind of changed my life. And I found channels like the Retro Hunters, the Game Chasers, Dinky Dana, Pat the NES Punk with Flea Market Madness, and a few others, which I think oh, Ryan Right Now. I've been trying to remember that name for a while, a channel named Ryan Right Now. And this was the beginning of the end for me because this is where YouTube went from. When I would watch reviews, I would watch these guys and go, this is cool, but I would never be interested in doing YouTube. It never even crossed my brain because I'm like, oh, I don't know how to do edits like that. I don't know how to stand in front of a camera perfectly and talk just like this and do whatever. Not that they would stand perfectly or the big crazy edits with AVGN. But when I saw these channels, not the Game Chasers so much, but when I saw the other channels really more basic style, I was like, oh, Ever since I found retro gaming back again, I've been going out to flea markets and swap meets with my buddy Ricky, who's into them as well, and been doing what these guys do, but without a camera. And then when I, again, watching the Game Chasers, stumbled more deeply into the Game Chasers, this is where my brain started going, hmm, I don't know if I want to be basic game hunting. I think I want to go the route of production and start making these into stories because their channel would invoke emotions that the other channels weren't per se invoking. Yes, they would evoke all the right nostalgic things, fun, the goofiness, the silliness, it invoked all those emotions, but I wouldn't say it made me want to be like, oh, I want to make this like a show show. I got Battletoads on VHS for 50 cents. I got an empty Genesis box for a quarter. Never know when you can use one of these. And to hold up my britches, I got this schnazzy little belt hill for 25 cents. And now I don't have to sag anymore. But all I did know at that time is I want to go out there and do this. I want to film myself game hunting. And this wasn't a big old trend or anything. Yes, some people were doing, but it, it, but it wasn't like a big trend or anything. So... I brought the idea to Ricky. I'm like, dude, Ricky, we've been doing this for a few years now. Yes, we've always been gamers, retro gamers, playing Nintendo, video games, all that jazz. And we now we've been hunting for a couple years. What about us going out there and doing this? And the first thing we both thought is, yeah, this sounds awesome. We have no experience in front of a camera, no experience editing video, didn't even own equipment. And slowly we started to play this idea of maybe Maybe we should do it, but as anything goes, you procrastinate and you decide, oh, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. I won't do it. I, I don't want to jump into this because I don't know if it's something I'm going to be serious about doing. And one day while I was at the nuclear plant watching the Game Chasers, I remember Jay and Billy in an episode finding a miracle piano in one of the episodes and it was a big deal. And at this time, Ricky and I had already found a few and the day before we, I watched that episode, we found and bought, or Ricky did, a complete in box Miracle Piano. Hey, I ran across a um, piano for the Miracle Piano Teaching System. And that's where it was just like, we're doing this. I don't care, we're doing this, we're gonna make this happen. And it's interesting because I remember vividly sitting at the nuclear plant, grabbing this pink piece of paper, because it was something, that, a form that we had to fill out for something we would do, and I started writing down different things that would invoke emotions in me while watching other game hunting channels. Okay, I'm watching, oh, they have an intro. We should have an intro. Oh, they had an intermission. We should have an intermission. Oh, they're, uh, they're funny. They were purposely funny there. Uh, make sure we're funny. Write it down. Oh, end credits. Make sure we have end credits. Oh, make sure. Oh, I see they credited where they got the music from. We should probably credit where we got the music from. Funny enough. I have that paper. I have it to this day. 
I have this paper again. I'm not going to try to focus or anything major because, yeah, it's not going to focus because, oh, there we go. Because I'm not really going to be editing this video at all. I'm just letting it run and I never do videos like this, but I want to chat with you guys. So there's some of the things I wrote down for myself that I knew I wanted to accomplish when we became a show and started editing. This is where it began for me with going, we're going to do it to where when I left work that day, I started researching cameras. I found a camera called a Nikon one. And I remember I was watching how a commercial came on, on in between like the game chasers and it's like it all worked out to where a commercial came on for a, a camera called the Nikon one and Ashton Kutcher was promoting it. And I was like, Oh, that's cool. That's hip. The, the camera's all white and shiny. It looks different. It doesn't look like a normal camera that I see. Googled it, found out it records video. Great. I want it. I am in. Purchased the camera just like that. Wish I would have done more research or I guess knew back then I didn't know that I'd eventually want to hook up a shotgun microphone to the camera and I couldn't hook it up to that one and later upgraded to a Nikon one same camera, but a different model where I could hook in a shotgun mic. Then after that, I went, I went home, honey. I need to buy a laptop. I didn't own a laptop at the time. I had no need for a laptop. Why you want to waste this money on a laptop? Here's what I want to do. Silly, crazy. My wife was supportive. She wasn't like, you're going to go to the moon or you're going to suck. She was just like, all right, right on. You, you want to do that? Go for it. Enjoy yourself. Could be awesome. Um, I do remember, and I do have to say, and I'm not going to name names because you might even know some of the names, but there was definitely people in the beginning to where when I told them what I'm going to do, you know, people at the nuclear plant, some of my friends, some people who aren't friends anymore, just people in my life. I remember telling them what I'm going to do and that I want to start a game hunting channel and start filming this. And it's almost like you hear in the movies or in a show where you almost got laughed out of the room. Like, why would you do that? That's, that, that's stupid. Nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to watch. People are going to make fun of you. And I have to make it very clear that when we did this, there was zero thought in our head of like, oh, well, I hope thousands of people watch nothing. It wasn't even a thought. It was, we want to do this because this looks dang fun. As with anything, tons of naysayers, tons, it's not going to go anywhere. And I have to say, even if it didn't go anywhere, which I'll explain later, um, we still wouldn't have cared because we, um, we love doing it. But with that said, luckily it did go places, blah, blah, blah. We'll go into that later. Uh, we bought the camera, bought everything. And I remember sitting with Ricky, a uh, meeting at my house, at our my dining room table. We need to come up with a name. We need a name for the show. Something that we, I remember we Googled the word quest because we wanted it to be like a quest or adventure. You know, we Googled the word cha chasers, just like the game chasers. You know, you're, you're taking inspiration from people you know and you're trying to find ways to make it your own. And our biggest love for sure was the NES. Ricky and I loved the NES. Something we even did before, and this is a sidetrack, before we decided to go on and do the show, at one point we ended up emulating on the Wii every Nintendo game ever made. And we made sure we put at least 15 minutes into each video game so that we'd be better remembered about games of our past. Um, but we went around thinking of different things. Okay, NES was locked and we want to be the NES, something we love, NES. And I think one of the words that came up in the thesaurus for a word that was like chasers or hunters or, or grabbers was pursuit. And we came up with the name, the NES Pursuit. And it, things like this from there, the story takes off quickly. It's not like it's a big, long dragged out story from here because we had everything. We had a name, we had the software that I bought to do everything. And I started watching endless hours of YouTube tutorials on how to get good at editing. I never was happy with where I was at with editing. And if you see this video and this is your first time watching, which I doubt it, you're going to be like, what? You're not doing anything. If you watch my other videos that are on Amazon prime now that have been in independent film festivals, all this thing, this was important for me. Editing became nearly as big of an obsession and passion and all of that as video games did, as retro video games did. So take note of that. Tons of hours, never being satisfied. I want to do more. I want to do more. I want to do more. Obviously, when you go back and look at our first video, it's not even close to that. It was still more than a lot of people were doing on YouTube, but it, you know, swells of music coming in at the right times and text coming in, simple things, but at the time seemed sufficient for what I knew at the time. 
and we went out to Orange County Swap Meet in Orange County, California, and we just filmed. Took the little pink piece of paper with me, was kind of using this as, as a back guide. Like, okay, we want to welcome ourselves standing in front of the Swap Meet. We want to move here, a little quick intro, and just roll the camera and have fun and be ourselves. And that's what we did. After we filmed, things went super quick yet again because we were just excited. We weren't searching anything on YouTube like how to get views or how to get proper thumbnails or how to this. We just kind of bootlegged everything. Well, I'll be honest, and Ricky will be the first to admit, and anybody in the show, it, it was all me. After we film, it's always has been, probably always will be, always me from there. That's not casting shade. I've just been obsessed with production and all that since then. So, took the footage back, put it on my computer. I remember we went to Ricky's house and I sat on the edge of his couch, leaning over with the, ta the, the computer, the tablet, what is it called? A laptop, reaching over with the laptop and just editing the video in like one hour. And went up, did that, made a bootleg thumbnail. Again, didn't research what to title it, how to call it, tag it, anything. We knew nobody in the community, nobody, not a soul. We'd comment on YouTubers, sometimes they'd comment back. That's about all we had. And we posted the video, the NES Pursuit, Do You Love Nintendo, episode one. That's it. Went in and uploaded it. Nintendo related. Wish us luck today on our first episode of the NES Pursuit. The NES Pursuit. Cancel all that. Oh my gosh, I forgot about this. This is a side and it's gonna be quick. Before I posted that video, I literally posted an introduction video letting people know that we're coming, that we're gonna be doing these videos. Literally just tell the phone, the camera and said, hey, we're gonna shoot a video and we're gonna be making game hunting videos, hope you like it. We posted that first. There was, There's no really backstory to that. That's why I forgot about it. Hey guys, I just wanted to make this quick video kind of an introduction to what I'm going to be doing here on YouTube soon. Now me and my friend Ricky, we go to the swap meets pretty much every weekend. Here's actually a picture of what we got last weekend. Ricky got every game here except for the very right three games. He actually got them for about a dollar or two dollars each, some package games, um, so which is a pretty good deal. Nothing too rare, collectible, but fun games. Now the only good thing about the three games I did get is I got some good games. I got Mario Sunshine, I got Luigi's Mansion. I got Fantasy Star Online Episode 1 and 2, and I know I got a good deal at $5 each for these because I've checked on Amazon. Now I'm not a reseller or anything, but we do enjoy looking at the Swami for these games. And we're going to start posting these videos. We're going to post them as often as we can, as much as we can, and edit them and try to make them look as good as possible. We wanted to be a part of the video game community since we watch so many YouTube videos ourselves of all these other people that do this, so we just wanted to join in the fun. So I hope that you guys can like us, comment us, subscribe. Maybe even share with your friends and tell somebody you know about it. That's all we can really say for now, but I did want to say thank you guys so much for watching and I appreciate it, and hopefully we see you guys next time. Thank you. We posted the NES Pursuit video, posted it up. It was like in October or something, of, or November of 2012, and I'll be honest, we posted it, kind of forgot about checking it. Are you supposed to check it to see how many people watch? We didn't do any of that. We just kind of posted it and left and went on for episode two. Did you take three for both? No, it's too cheap. Okay, yeah, I was just wondering. And these? That one, 20, 20 bucks. 20 bucks? Let's do another episode because Ricky and I, every single weekend, we're going out to game hunt. So that was part of our ecosystem. It wasn't like we were doing something extra at the time to get these game hunting videos out. No, we just, okay, let's just bring the camera along with us. And when we went to post the second video, when we went to post the second video, I remember looking at it and I'm like, oh, people watched. Not that bad amount. I think it was like maybe around under a thousand people. And it was like only a week. And I was like, huh, there's people subscribe. There's people that, that say they, they liked it and they enjoy the show. Come to find out some of the first circle of people that followed us were actually like local game hunters to us so that was really cool like roots for us showing that the local community here kind of found us i don't know how they found us again we didn't know anybody we just posted video do you love nintendo maybe the word nintendo triggered some algorithm something and it hit something lightly and it just kind of worked 
we did that time went on and we kept putting out these videos and i kept progressing the way i would do production and watch other channels for inspiration and i have to admit and and i don't want to sound a certain way but i know there's a lot of channels that are like yeah we hit you know a thousand in a year or we did this or it took us this long and the grind i'll be honest our first year of youtube was nothing but fun nothing but exciting nothing but carefree and we hit i think 10,000 we did hit 10,000 subscribers in less than a year and it was just such a journey as these things unfolded because we found ourselves doing a thousand subscriber giveaway like within a month and a half and then we're like oh my gosh we hit 2,000 and it was just such a wild time because YouTube was such in a different state to where everybody in there, and I don't want to talk about this too much because we've done it a hundred times. Everybody in there was doing it because they loved it and it gave such a pure vibe to it. You can't go back on that. There's so many things in this world that now you just can't go back to the roots because it's too far. It's too deep. Social media influencers is a big thing now. You can't go back. It'll never happen to that pure state of the Nirvana almost feeling of wow look at this community and look at the growth and the fun and there's no sponsors and there's nothing behind it it was just such a fun time for us with nes pursuit and since then the nes pursuit obviously i'm not going to go too deep into where it's gone since then the nes pursuit our original channel on a channel called retro liberty was the name of the channel oh which by the way i never explained that the name retro liberty which is the channel name i had that channel name before we decided on making the series, the NES Pursuit, it was just my personal account. Retro, because I always loved retro video games. Liberty, because I've always been big into like American history and I love America. So Retro Liberty was our name before we came up with actually doing a show. It was just my personal thing. But that channel got like 35,000 subscribers. It went to the moon, as they say. I remember one of the big highlights was going to Portland Retro Gaming Expo, like during our first year. And at that point, we already had 10,000 subscribers. I remember Pat, the NES punk, coming up to me. I'm like, he knows who I am. Telling me like, hey, man, it's really cool that you grew this fast. And I, it's really rad of you that you guys are doing this and that you guys grew this quick. And it was, he was really supportive. I remember like having dinner with like the Game Chasers and Metal Jesus and all these people that I had no idea even knew who we were really. Yes, I knew some of them would you know, talk to us, comment. Some of them will get a hold of us on a website or something, gamestreet1.com. I'm not going into the detail of where the channel went, just kind of hitting some highlights. Basically, that channel hit 35,000 35, subscribers. We took it down for some personal, very personal reasons, and then uh, decided to bring it back in a more healthy way. For me, that was bringing it back with not doing any social media. I haven't had social media for over four years now. Uh, no Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I only run YouTube. I'm not in charge of like any of the social aspects of it, but I went on a big tangent. So I edited it out. I talked too long about random things, but I just want to say that this channel is so deeply rooted in nostalgia and community. And now I think you have a better understanding of why um, we did this. Uh, the motivators behind it was simply for the love of retro video games and a big thank you. And I've always wanted to say this and do this, but a huge thank you to some of the names that really inspired me and pushed me over the edge to do this. And that would be the Game Chasers NES Complex, a channel named Chipsters, which is now the Easter Egg Hunter and the Retro Hunters. I feel like those are the big four that really pushed us over in the edge of doing it. And I know since then, you know, our old channel had like 35,000 subscribers. This channel has like 40,000. And some people are like, hey, I know you mentioned earlier in the video that this changed your life. And a lot of you might say, how? You're not even that big. You're, you're not a big channel changed my life in multiple ways from, I now have a community of people, I wouldn't know Gabo, I, I wouldn't know Mikey. I now have a community of people in my life and with you guys that I'd have never experienced if it wasn't for YouTube. I just bought a home in South Carolina. I wouldn't have done so unless I started YouTube because with YouTube, I found out about the Southeast Game Exchange, had friends like NES Addict who helped me go over there. I love the area blah, 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 all these different things. So many things that have taken place in my life. Even my job that I'm in today, I got back into this job because I got laid off from the nuclear power plant. And I met Gabo, who was a fan who worked in the energy industry, who then helped me get into his company, which got me back into my old company that I got laid off from. It's crazy. And as far as other things, Amazon Prime Video, 
independent film festivals, different awards, red carpets, all different things, editing and commercials, hosting different networks, being a host for different channels on gas station TVs and airplane seats and behind the airplane, I've been the host of shows on there and just so much fun stuff. And I just say this stuff because this all happened because of YouTube and a dream, not letting people talking me down, a little pink piece of paper and you guys that kept us motivated through the time, your comments that were so nice to where when our first channel was taken down by us, by our own choice, that those comments would play in our head for the next year and a half to two years to where we're like, we could do this and come back in a healthy way to where we're not obsessed with it and to where we can just love it and make it our passion. So again, from start to finish, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for listening and thank you for always watching. I know we make jokes, say unsubscribe, and that's just my insecurities when I say that because I don't have that in me to be that guy to convince you that you need to subscribe or convince you that you owe me something or convince you to do a Patreon or something. That's never been us ever because we're so deeply, deeply rooted in our love for video games and our love for hunting. And as we always, and as we have always said on this show, always, the thrill of the hunt far outweighs the actual games and actual physical objects that you're, objects that you're gonna obtain. The thrill of the hunt, the dogs are starting to go crazy. My neighbor's dogs. I only got one dog and it's a pretty quiet dog. But thank you guys again. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much and hopefully this shows you guys the deep, deep story, maybe in too much detail, of how the NES pursuit started and I'm thankful that you're here. I really mean that, thank you. So and uh, <laughs> that's it, uh, anything else? Uh, I'll let you slap me, go ahead. You know, you slap me!